from 2017 up until 2018, that year, I built more than people that have had their firms for like 20 years. That guy was a police informant just for a thousand pound a month. And what happened to him in the end? He got locked up. I think we are the busiest and the best firm, not in the Midlands, in the country right now. Remember, there's a defense for every offense. Welcome back to the Blue Stick Show. Opposite me today, we've got Ahmed Yakub, the solicitor everyone on TikTok knows of. If you don't know him, go on TikTok and you'll know who he is. Trust me. How are you, don't my brother? I don't know that you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> so what are them, buds? Well, listen, this is season two, all about crime. And I've had loads of criminals on here, as you all know. And I thought, let me get the man that keeps the criminals out of prison. Yeah, we're on a mission to empty the prisons out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that, man. Don't, you're going to have the police on your case today. They're already on my case, I think. But uh, yeah, man, thank you for coming down. No, thank, thank you for coming on the show. So talk to me. Listen, everyone knows you from being the TikTok solicitor, the superstar of TikTok right now. You're, I've seen you every time I scroll, you're there. Yeah. Like, I promise you, every time I go down that For You page, you're on there with your famous slogan, which is... Remember, there's a defence for every offence. And that has gone viral. Yeah, it has, you know. It's, it's TikTok, like we were talking about it earlier. It's quite strong, man. It's, it, the reach is... It's amazing. Huge. It's amazing. So let's throw it back a little bit. The man who's become an amazing solicitor, I'm guessing with an amazing track record... 30 years ago, or how old are you now? 34, brother. So 34 years ago, no one knew oh. you was going to be that. So when you was like 15, 16, what was life like for you? 15, 16, yeah, that was year 10, year 11. I'll be honest with you, that's when I got kicked out of school. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, year 10, I got kicked out of school, and I went back for year 11 just for my uh, revision yeah. sessions, and then I did my GCSEs. I still passed. I got four GCSEs. All right, yeah, it's not not very good, but for some for someone who's a solicitor, like when I've always thought of solicitors, I think they got to be super smart. They got to be like whiz kids in school. So how have you? See, got it's a bit different because people have uh, that impression of solicitors, <clears throat> but criminal law, I think, is a bit different. To okay. make it out, make it in criminal law, I think it's not about being book smart. You have to know how to think out of the box. That's, that's criminal law. My grades w wasn't all that. You probably got better GCSE no, than me. I, I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> I got four Cs. And that's, that's, that's what I got as well, to be fair. Yeah. I did, yeah. Well done, man. That's good, that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. A stars, man. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of A star students work for me now. Yeah. And I see, I've seen people now. I've trained a lot of people over my, since I've had my practice for five years. I've come across a lot of people and some have been book smart and some have been street smart. You need a bit of both, but yeah. I think the street smart people are going to get more further, further than the book smart people. Have you watched the series Suits? I've heard a lot about it. You never watched it? Honestly, I've heard a 100 percent watch it. I need to watch that. It's a really, really, really good. People who have watched Suits, you know why I'm saying yeah. that. Now I've I've heard about Harvey Specter in it. Yeah. The so fake Fake reason. <laughs> <laughs> so look, question for you. Have you ever been arrested? Yes. You have? Yes. And has that been recently or was that back in the day? I've been arrested three times. Yeah? Yeah. The first one was when I was in school. Okay. Yeah. And it was for something stupid. It was, I had something on me, what I shouldn't have. I had a little knife on me, shouldn't have. So that Fair was, enough. That was one of them, but I was a kid. Then I got arrested again for a fight okay. uh, in Birmingham City Centre. Uh, nothing come up out of them. I yeah. think for the knife, uh, I did get arrested for it. I didn't get charged. And for the fight, I... Um, NFA. NFA. And that was at college times. And... Um, there was a more recent one which I, I can't get into right <laughs> oh, now. Shit, but you know, really? after, after camera, we'll have a chat. What's going on, guys? If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you scroll down. We're now live on Spotify, so you can watch us while you're driving, listen to us, listen to us while you're in the gym. Pretty much just listen to us anywhere. And make sure you give us a five-star review on Spotify. Thank you. Oh, really? Like that? Okay, we'll okay, okay. No problem at all. But listen, talk to me. What is, how have you become this social media star in some sense? Because you can't take away the credit. At the end of the day, you're a solicitor. 
and you've done very well for yourself. You've got to practice for five years. So as much as we're all sitting there saying you're doing well on TikTok and all of that, to you, that's just probably like games and a bit of jokes and <coughs> just helping build your brand a little bit. You've smashed it. We're sitting here in your conference room. You've got a beautiful practice here. So you're not just a little social media star. No. You've got a very successful business. As I walked in, I see two Lamborghini Euros is sitting there. So you're doing well. You're doing well. Do you know what it is? Alhamdulillah. You know, even before social media, before TikTok, before Instagram, <laughs> I was doing well anyway. Okay. I started this practice off in 2016. My first year, from 2017 up until 2018, that year I built more than people that have had their firms for like 20 years. Oh, wow. 15 years. So I got noticed on the first year that I actually took this practice. And why do you think over. that is? I think it's because of my network. I, I have been brought up around criminals. Yeah. From a place called Aston. So most people, they don't know much. They did used to get into... Uh, nowadays, kids are getting a bit better, I think. <clears throat> Not respect-wise or anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. but in terms of... They've staying got, out of crime. They're trying to stay out of crime because I'm sure they are realising that there's money to be made in other ways and you can make more money from not doing crime. Yeah. Just use your head in it. <laughs> God has given us a brain. Use it. Picking up something from a one supplier or a dealer and dropping it after someone doesn't require no brains. The only brains you have to use for drug dealing are it's trying to not get detected by the police, really. Yeah. And you're always watching over your shoulder. But what? It, that's a different story. But I was brought up in Aston, so there's loads of crime there. And most of the criminals, I grew up around them. So when I got into the law field, firstly, when I was working for someone, I started building my network. People started knowing that I'm into law now. Yeah. And they automatically started using me. But it stopped recently. A couple of years ago, it stopped. I'll tell you why. Really? My own people, I've seen... I've backed off a bit. I don't know. I think success brings, I don't know, people Hate, stop talking jealousy. to you. I don't know. You've, you've probably been through nah, the same. But what I want to understand is, being a young kid, I'm guessing where you was brought up was a bit dangerous area. It yeah. Were, it, it weren't a posh area. Like no. you said, you brought up around criminals. So you brought up in the hood, let's say, yeah? Yeah, the hood, yeah. How have you switched it around and not got involved in the crime, not got, not gone and... You've gone on the legit side, whereas most people brought up in the hood and brought up in the ghetto and that turned to crime because they want to make money and all of that. How have you now turned your life around and gone on a good good path, I suppose? Because it's not easy. It's not it's easy. Hard. When you're brought it's up very around hard. Uh, you get distracted. But I don't know what it was. I did because Again, it probably goes back to... I've had big dreams, bruv. And doing crime or selling a bit of drugs or, I don't know, doing a bit of fraud... I ain't going to achieve that yeah. sort of legacy. But did you ever want to be a solicitor? I think that happened after an incident took place. Okay. My mate got arrested okay. for attempted murder. Oh, wow. One of my close friends. And I thought he was mistreated. The justice system mistreated him. And I thought if he had a better legal team, he could have got a better result. He saved nine years in prison. We were 16, 17 at the time. We just had come out of school. Yeah. So we were young kids, and th I think that was the trigger point. What's going on, guys? This video is being brought to you by Morris Andrews Solicitors. As you're all aware, we've done a season two all about crime. If you watch that all and you're in any situation like that and need help getting out of the situation, reach out to Morris Andrews Solicitors and see if it's something they can help you with. Remember, there's a defense for every offense. And that just turned your life around and said, that's it, I want to get involved now. I want to become a solicitor. That's it. I think it was then. But then in college, I didn't do very well. Being a young child in that generation, child, it's, in you're the, enjoying yourself. You're living yeah. life. And you're beating, just sitting around doing nothing. It's, it's, that was fun back then. Day, back then days. Now I can't sit around for 10, 15 minutes without doing nothing. I have to be doing something. Like when I get up, people say work, work starts for me when I wake up, when I'm on my phone yeah. straight away, I'm checking my emails, replying to my WhatsApps. Came back to well, your, work, your work don't stop, to be fair of you, because you your phone must be on 24 hours a day. One of your clients might need to call you, and you can't say no. You can't be like, yo, I'm sleeping, piss off, mate. Yeah, Because that's, that's the life you live. You now, yeah, exactly. So now, now I've come to a stage that I've got staff, they've got the phone, and I don't have to 
physically answer any phone calls, much phone calls. But yeah. a lot of people I know personally they that have got team. my that have got my number, so they phone me themselves. Yeah. Do you get and it? You, so, and you, I can't say no to them. <laughs> that's like, what I mean. It's like, you know me now. If you phone me, I'll have to answer your phone call, innit? If you give me your, you're going to divert me to the work line. Next time <laughs> nah, I phone, I'm going to phone. Welcome to the office. I'm going to be like, oh, bro, to block this guy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I won't. So it's one of them ones. Like, if I know somebody, I have to answer their phone call. And it may not be you, you in trouble. It might be someone who you know very closely. And at that moment in time, the stress levels are very high. When somebody gets arrested, your family member or your friend, They've just been picked up. You don't know where they're going, what, what station the police are taking them to. You don't know what they've been arrested for. Yeah. So stress levels There's are panic high. as well. People start getting... Exactly. Look, I, I've been arrested, yeah, for silly things. And my mum, oh my... Like, I got arrested for like just stupid shit. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. You know, it's, you go in there, you're going to spend the night... You're going to come back in there. You're going to come out in the morning. My whole... My mum's having a heart attack, thinking, oh my God, I've lost my son for life. But they that's do. what mums are like. And some mums dads are like, are like the same as well. You can't... And that makes it worse as well. Because when you, my mum, she phoned me, they brought the phone to the cell, and I got my mum on the phone, like, crying down the phone. I was like, yo, mum, chill out. Like, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? Calm down. Exactly. The family members are the, you have to keep them you reassured. Gotta assure, reassured. Yeah. yeah. You gotta reassure them that, look, everything is going to. But sometimes, deep down, we know it's not. It's not going to be all right. <laughs> but it's, it's one of them ones, isn't it? And, one thing I want to know, because obviously I always see you around, you defend everyone and everyone. Yeah. Literally, I'm, I scroll through you. Last night, I've done my research. I'm scrolling through your socials. I watched your little clips on your TikTok as well. And I was thinking, right, what am I going to ask him? Because you've covered a lot. And because yeah. you do a lot of content yourself, you've covered a lot of stuff. I do. So I was trying to think of different angles to go in, ask him about his childhood, family, and try and like switch it up on there. But one thing from talking to you is, you've got loads of stories. I've got loads, man. You, you must have <laughs> loads of... But you're in that life every day. No case is the same. No case is the same. They're, they're never the same. And I've seen you defend did famous rappers. Yeah, have famous people. And what's it like when you're defending them? Because... Uh, and you're getting different kind of attention, thinking, oh, this is the guy that got this guy out of prison or stopped him from yeah, going Yeah, it's, it's good. It brings a lot of attention to you as well. Yeah, you know what it is? A lot of kids, they look up to these rappers... And they, I don't look up to them, I'll be <laughs> yeah. honest with you. And so my son, when Natalia, this guy messaged me today, he's asking about this case. He said, oh, you on this case? Yeah. They, they act like it's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's normal, but you do get recognised. You know, one credit, credit where credit is due. Every time a rapper post some, posted something about me. You get loads of followers. I get loads of followers and I get inquiries, genuine inquiries saying, look, we've seen you done that guy's case. Can you help us? You know, and it helps. Do you have like a good success rate? I don't know how it works in here, but is there, is your team doing well? Right, as in, are you winning the majority of your cases? Very well. I think, I'm not boasting, shouldn't blow my own trumping, but I think we are the busiest and the best firm, not in the Midlands, in the country right now. Let me tell you why. I've just been operating this firm for five years, which is not that long if you think yeah. about it. But that's what I say to people. One year, that one year can make up for the 10 last year, yeah. 10 yeah, last yeah, years. 100%. I say that to people, so just carry on going. If you think it's getting tough, just carry on going. It's, success is not far away, your destination, whatever it is, it's not far away. People think that it, things are hard to achieve, man. You just got to put your head down and you can get things it's done. dedication as well, it's even down to like going to the gym, like we spoke about earlier. Yeah. If you stick at it for six months... You're going to see a difference. You're if you go for one week and then, oh, I'm tired now, I'm not going back. Yeah, you gotta you're not going to say, oh, why haven't I got a six pack? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> man. It's a long term <laughs> thing, isn't it? It's, it's not short term. People can dream, but. So tell me, why is your practice the best practice in the UK right now? I want to know. Uh, because of the results that we get, like yesterday, yeah. uh, I got represented somebody in um, Liverpool Crown Court. Yeah. Big drugs case. One co-defendant received 19 years in prison. Right. My guy got 40 months. Oh, wow. The judge at Liverpool Crown Court actually said it. These, guy, these guys, the other guys who got 19 years, these defendants should have... No, sorry, what the, his exact words were these. These defendants chose the wrong defence team. Oh, wow, wow. So that's, that in itself is saying... That, that's credit. That, that's credit, so... I'm not just, I'm not just, I don't like blowing my own trumpet. 
that's one thing I don't like. I like to keep it humble in it. But the thing is, we do get a lot of results, a lot of very good results. And success rates, you have to calculate them, not in mathematically, but now I just say if you come to me and you've got a case. Do you take on cases you know you're going to lose? I was going to come on to that. Yeah, as well. yeah, God, yeah, that's what I want to know. That's interesting. So I would take the case on, but I wouldn't make somebody have it. I would only make someone have a full trial if I deep down believe that. Not whether he's innocent or he's guilty. That's got nothing to do with me. Yeah. That's up to them. But if I believe that trial, we would get this guy off. This guy can get an acquittal. This guy can get found not guilty at trial. That's the only time I'll tell you, listen, have a trial, we'll win it. If I feel that when we go to court, the jury members will think, this guy is chatting it. It's yeah. loadable. You're going to get found guilty. So I will tell the client, look, let me speak to the CPS. Let me try to get you a good deal. Let's get your sentence reduced. Like what yesterday what happened in Liverpool yeah. Crown Court. The guy's sentence went from 10, 15 years to 40 months. He's only going to save 20 months inside. That's nothing. It's one year and a bit and he'll be out. So that's about, it's exactly, exactly your point. So if I know I'm going to lose a case at trial, I won't let him have a trial. It's people's lives, isn't it? It's not, you're, not, you're playing with someone's life. Someone's life. This is not like, a, I don't class this as a job, man. This is like a bit more than a job because you're playing. If you come to me, you've just put your life or your freedom in my hands. Yep. Not as like, I, there's two ways of looking at it. Now, if somebody comes and if somebody trusts me, because people travel from far to come to see me, Carlisle, then you're talking Bournemouth, all over, man, Brighton. Yeah, but you're doing something good then. Yeah, they come not- all over. So if they've put their trust in me, I'm not going to sit here and lie to them and say, I can do this and I can do that. A lot of people have come and said to me, but I thought there's a defence for every offence. <laughs> I had to pipe and tell us, listen. But you say it, you do say it. You I, do, I say it a lot, bro. But the thing, is, the thing is, I have to tell him, listen, calm down. I can't change the evidence. It's yeah. here in black and white. What are we going to say about this? Come on. So, be serious. Let's not be silly now kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I, they think that it's all... People think I'm a magician. They think <laughs> we're going to walk in here and we're going to go we, that's free. That's it, we're good. It, it doesn't work like that, man. So sometimes you have to put it on him and say, look, you're going to get found guilty. There's no point having a trial. Let's p- plead guilty and let me get you a good deal and we'll be, get out of there as soon as possible. So we spoke on something before, off camera. Police yeah, yeah. informants. Police, very common. Police informants are very common in criminal so proceedings. So you're... you're a solicitor yep. in the crime industry yep. and you've been in it for five years. Yeah. So from my understanding, if I'm speaking to anyone, you're going to know it a lot more than me. So as someone who's involved in the crime industry, tell the viewers, what's going on with police informants? Snitches, people who See, take a police pay. police informants, there's two ways that the police get people to be informants. Yeah. One way is they incite them with money. Okay. They give them money, and these people are not people with money. They are trying to make money, so yeah. not even huge amounts of money. I've had people come and tell me that the police were just paying them like a thousand pound a month. Thousand pound a nothing. month. Come on, you can spend that on a weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's true, man. So that guy was a police informant just for a thousand pound a month, and what happened to him in the end? He got locked up. A what? He got locked up for a drugs conspiracy. Wow. And I said to him, look, let's go. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to mention it, that you're a police informant. They have to drop the case. Yeah. In the end, he could have, he, he, he said no. He goes, no, I just want to plead guilty. Let me get. So they've obviously got to him first, scared him they up. Probably have, yeah. That's, that's what I think. Happened. So I heard that there's a, a statistic that there's over 10,000 police paid informants in the UK. It's probably, they're probably more. Oh, really? Yeah, 10,000 that people, have, people know about. There's people, <laughs> you know, there's loads. Some people just inform for the sake of it as well. Yeah, they sometimes don't get you nothing. get jealous people. So there oh. are a lot of jealous people out there. I, I've, I've come across that. I know there's a lot of jealous people out there. They're just, they've got no time. They've got no... No, they've got too much time, sorry. They've got too much time on the hand. All they do is talk about people and they, I don't know. And sometimes they're, they're snitching without even realising they're snitching. Yeah. But there's been times where 
I've heard of stories. Guys just been talking to someone in the pub or something, da da da, said something. Next thing you know, that man's been arrested because that person he's told is a police informant. Someone gets arrested for a fight, perverting cause of justice. Yeah. They try to make up two parties after a fight. And they, they got arrested for perverting the cause of justice and they're in a police station cell now. Okay. So they're in a police station cell in a holding area. Next minute, some guy starts talking to them. Yeah. This guy starts talking to them. This guy, who's just been arrested for perverting cause of justice now, and happens to be one of the big time heroin suppliers, <laughs> this guy's offered this guy, who is a police informant, heroin. So now he gets arrested for offering to supply as well. So now he's finished. So you have to be careful who you're talking to. The yep. walls have ears, man. Yeah, that's why everyone says that. Walls have ears. The walls Trust have ears. Me. Another thing that I say to everyone I meet, don't ever make a phone call or send a message that you don't feel that somebody is going to read. What do you mean? Or a phone call. You're talking on the phone. Don't expect that phone call not to be listened to. Okay. Or don't send a message that you don't expect other people to read. You have to be careful with your phone, I'm telling you. So on, on that, yeah, i got a question for that. So I, I have been arrested yeah. for like silly things, like I said, and they took my phone off me. And they said, give us your pin. I said, no. They said, if you don't give us your pin, you're going to get an extra time added on if you get charged. Two years, the threat you don't do. I said, you're not getting my pin end of, that was it. Can they get into iPhones? Yes, they can. They and can. they can get the evidence off the phone? See, sometimes what happened is, it depends on the phone, up until iPhone 8, it's quite easy for them, iPhone 8, 9. Really? Everything underneath that is very easy for them. Above that, 10s, 11, 12s, 10, 14s now, I think that's the latest one. Yeah. It gets difficult, but there are still ways that they can get into it. But what can happen is, once they get into it, with, once they break into it, hack into it, and they don't have a pin, First, they try to crack the code. If they can't, then they hack into the phone with some software they've got. Yeah, yeah. And that sometimes result, results in uh, a lot of uh, information or data. Yeah. They don't open up and stuff. Okay. So, but they can get they in. They can. There's ways and means. They can, they, they, it's the government. That's what I've always said. I've always said, no matter what, if they want to put you inside, they, can. they will put you inside. No matter who your team is, no matter who you are, no matter... Like, if, they, if they do not want you on the streets... They'll they get you off the streets. They can, they can, yeah. Oh, it's happened to myself. They've tried it with myself, so I'm not going to get into it. We'll talk about it later, but <laughs> they tried it. You can, you can give us that little backstory off camera. Yeah, I'll do that off camera. So what's new for you at the minute? What's the plan now? Obviously, right now, you're smashing socials. You're, you've started that, clearly, to build your brand. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And what is now? Are you just going to keep smashing what you're doing at the minute? And just Have you got any new goals, any new plans at the minute? The plan is to get bigger and grow. It's, so it's life's a uh, never-ending learning process, isn't it? And you just keep learning. And this is, is not the only thing that I do. I do other yeah. business ventures on the side as well, uh, abroad and here as well. So just expand. And, uh, but what made you want to get into TikTok? Because when, when most people can do what you've done and look silly, they can. There's a very fine line between being a solicitor on TikTok and looking silly. Yeah, of course, I've seen people and look silly. You've done it, and you've done it in a professional. I think it's because you're coming with facts and you're coming with educational clips where people are watching and they're like, "Oh fuck, oh yeah, that's cool, man." Like, I, I didn't know that. Me. Yeah. So, because you're doing it in an educational way, people are respecting it. But there's many people, like I said, who can do it and look like they're embarrassing themselves, looking silly and stuff. What got you into that? Who was it? Was it your son? Was it the younger generation? What? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't my son. It was my nephew. Okay. There's some lawyers. Um, you've probably seen them. The American lawyers, Pop Brothers, that law. Yeah, yeah. You've seen them. I've seen. I've seen their video. Okay. Thought, and it popped, and people are sharing it on my WhatsApp. People are sending it to me. And there's one. There's they're swearing in there. Don't want to mention. Shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah. You're saying. And it went around. It got viral. So that's when I thought, you know, I could, I could do that. Yeah. And. Covid came back then, and the offices were closed. Your businesses probably were closed All as well. It was bad, and it was up. like, and I thought, let's make a video, and I made one video. Yeah, and that video just blew up, man. It was everywhere. All of the meme pages were sharing. It. Everyone was sharing it it's on Instagram, and that that's my first video on Instagram. And then somebody told me about TikTok. They go, whatever yeah. you're putting on Instagram, put, put it on TikTok, TikTok as well, and watch it blow up, and it did. 
And then you just took, kept it going from there? I just kept it going. Now, I just, I, I, first thing I do, I, I walk in. It takes me about five minutes to do it. <laughs> yeah. Literally five minutes of walking. I'll sit there, I'll put my mic on, record it with my phone, and I'll just make a video. It takes me five minutes, then I'll send it to this kid I know. He edits it. Half an hour later, I've got the video. It's done, it's live. And I just, 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 just upload it. It takes me literally five minutes. So I've got a question for you. Go on. What's been your biggest case yet? Without mentioning names, of course, you can't say who and what's and where's. What has been the one case that stands out in your five years of practice where you think, yeah, we done well there, that was good? There must be one. There must be one case where you tell everyone about it. There's a few. There's a few. I'll talk about two cases quick, yeah? quickly, yeah? As, as quick as I can. Go ahead. We've got all the time in the world. Talk yeah, to we me. Have. So one case that, I, that was in 2019... Uh, it was a case of is a conspiracy to import class A drugs, cocaine. Okay. Yeah. So the cocaine came from South America somewhere, and there was kilos and kilos. I'm talking huge amounts, and it got to Stansted Airport in boxes of bananas. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. think I heard about this. You know. You probably heard it. Yeah. And my guy got arrested driving the van. Okay. He got pulled over. The police searched it, and the police already knew which they boxes had, had the stuff. Bananas in, in it. <laughs> the, the bananas, the good bananas in there. So, and all of the boxes, some of the boxes, not all of them, they had um, recording devices in there. Oh, really? So they put recording, so they could hear what the passenger and the driver are talking about as well. Oh. And see, in that case, classic example, of what you spoke about not long ago, informants. So I asked for disclosure of informants or any informant-led evidence. There's a disclosure that's called unused material, non-sensitive unused material. They usually give us that. Then there's something called sensitive unused material. And do they have to disclose all evidence to you? Yes. By if, law, is that if, correct? Yeah, yeah. If it's relevant to the investigation, Yeah then they have to disclose it to us. Okay. So first, you ha the disclosure requests, sorry, I'm just a legal jargon. If you don't understand, just tell me. The disclosure requests have to be relevant to your case, yeah. to your defense, to the lines of defense that you're going to put forward. We put forward a defense that we've been set up. Yeah. Now that gives rise to them disclosing any informant-led evidence. So that's when we've said, Okay, we believe we've been set up. You have to tell us now if there's any informant-led evidence. And what they normally do is they either confirm or deny. Okay. Or they say we neither confirm nor deny, which both mean sort of the same thing. So if they say we neither confirm nor deny, that means they've got something. They don't want to give it yeah. to us. Which but is do they not have to? But that's what I'm saying. By law, do they need to give you it? Yeah, they have to. So what if they say we neither confirm nor deny? What's then th we'll list it in court. Okay, cool. For an application. Then they have to. Then they have to. Then they have to say whether it's sensitive, and that's why we don't want to give it. And then they have to give us sort of something, what it is. Yeah. We've got an informant, blah, blah. But then we'll say, okay, who's the informant? We need the identity. Give well, us they, and they give you it as well? They won't. So what happens then? They have to drop the case. Oh, They drop the case. No way. They, they dropped his case. They dropped that guy's case. So he got away. He got away because they didn't want to give the name of... The informant. Oh, shit. And by law, they... Kingston Crown Court. Fuck, so he was looking at a long little bird. Like a, a long little... 15, 20 years. He was years. looking at a proper bird. 15, 20. So he's got an informant around him, obviously. Of course, and I told him that as well. I got there's someone around you, brother. But he got set up as well in a way he did. Yeah. But there's informant. That was one case that sticks out when informants are spoken yeah. about because it happens as normal. A, another case was uh, a conspiracy to commit murder. My client was originally arrested for that. And I keep talking, I've spoken about this a few times. Yeah. He got arrested for a conspiracy to murder. He got bailed. He didn't get charged. His co-defendant at the time got charged. I think they found a shotgun with loads of ammunition. Ready for war, these guys were. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they bailed my client, then they arrested him a couple of months later and charged him. Yep. They, in the end, they charged him with a conspiracy to possess a firearm with intent to endanger life, which yeah. is the same thing as the And what's the sentence for that? Life, you could get yeah? life. Okay. So my client now, according to the prosecution, according to the police, was the main guy 
on the outside, the gang that wanted to kill this person was inside. So my guy was the outside man, yeah. basically. So he's seen going to the co-defendant's house mm -hmm. and coming back out. The co-defendant, an avalator, gets arrested with guns and ammunition. Before that, he's seen with the co-defendant, the same one, got arrested with the guns, seen with him, going to an area not far from here <laughs> and scoping out the place yeah. where they were going to shoot. Because, again, that was a case where I believe, it wasn't disclosed, but I believe there were bugs. So what, police within, do that? Within the prison cell, because how would they know the address of the house that these guys want to go? Yeah. How would they know these guys are going to buy a gun now? How would they know these guys are going to buy a stolen car now that they're going to use in the shooting? How would they know all of that? They're not psychic. Yeah, no, of course not. So I believe that was the case. We didn't bring it up. We didn't need to. We got off anyway. Yeah. I believe that there were bugs within the prison cells. They do shit like that. I've it's the it only happen. way. It's the only way for them to find out I've that information. Seen it I've seen it happen. And so they've charged my client now for a conspiracy to commit murder or conspiracy to possess a firearm with intent yeah. to endanger life. Same Charged thing. him with that, along with nine other people, eight other people. There's nine people in the case Fuck now. Yeah, yeah. Half of them are in prison, half of them are outside. They're saving prison for something else. Yep. There's a well-known rapper involved in that case as well. Okay. Local Birmingham one. And we had a trial. So before the trial started, I kept requesting disclosure. I'm, when it comes to disclosure, I go all in because yeah. I want everything I want everything from them. Whatever they've got, I want it. They might help us, they might not, but I want it. And do they try and refuse it to start? Always. Oh, they do, yeah? Always. They, that's their job, to make other life difficult. But at the end of it, they have to. They have to. Okay. Otherwise, the proceedings, they don't want to stall proceedings. I and mean, when yeah. you go in front of a judge, the judge does not want to stall proceedings. The judge. And can the judge say, I don't want to give you disclosure? The judge can only say it if it's not relevant. If we make it relevant to the investigation, sorry, to the proceedings and relevant to have a defense, which in this case was relevant because they saved snippets from my client's mobile phone, uh, him looking for cars. Um, I think he had it like, he was playing with a gun, but it was a toy gun or something, yeah, I don't yeah. know, but they tried to make it relevant. Anyway, and some messages to him and the co-defendant. They saved that. So that gave rise for disclosure of the full phone then because yeah. they've given us something out of it. They've given you snippets, you need to look into it. Yeah, I need to look at it, I need to, con to contextualise that. I need to see if it's right or not because we can't take their word for gospel. It's, yeah. Because I've seen the prosecution move not straight, basically. It's normal for them. I've seen that happen. And I, I don't come on to that after this, why I say that. I've got a good reason for that as well. So... They gave the, my client's phone to us eventually after asking for weeks and weeks and months. They gave the phone to us on a Thursday. Yeah. Trial starting on a Monday now. So you got three days. Three days. Friday, Saturday. I've rang my client. My client's on bail. The only one to be on bail in the whole proceedings as well. Thank to his auntie. His auntie put down some short security money that yeah. we put in courts. And the case, we broke it down as well. So he got bail. That's a different story, but he got bail. He thought he's not going to get bail. His co-defendants told him, you ain't get bail. Your solicitor is just lying to you. I said to him, forget about them. I'm going to get you bail. Just yeah. relax. He got bail. He was on bail. I called him up on Thursday and I said, you need to come to the office. He came to the office and we went through his mobile phone that day. And that, that was the reason he got acquitted. Let me tell you why. There was a WhatsApp group between him. He's a football player, so Sunday football. Famous or just... No, no, no. Just normal Sunday league. So the rapper that's involved, is he well known? He was well known in Mid Midlands. Okay, yeah. And what happened is, uh, there was a WhatsApp group between him and his football people. It's called Sunday league team. Sunday league team, basically. And it says, no football today, pitch waterlogged. I've looked okay. at that message and I've seen the time. That was like the similar time to when the police had seen him going to this address and scoping it out according to them. Okay. And I said to him, I go, you were meant to be football that day? He goes, oh yeah, I was. I go, how come you didn't go there? He went down the message, pitch waterlogged. 
I go, so why did you go with him? He goes, when they said the pitch was waterlogged, I found him. I wanted to buy some cannabis off the guy. Yeah. And when he came to my car, he jumped in my car and he goes, take me somewhere. It's only 10 minutes away. You can have a smoke on the way as well. So we went, I had a smoke. He went, he said he needs to see somebody. I didn't get out of the car. He never got out of the car. He just done a block and we just came back. And he, uh, I don't know what, he, I can't remember the exact story, but whether he dropped something off there or not, cannabis or not, I don't know. But his memory started getting refreshed. Yeah, yeah. So he goes, yeah, I remember something like that happened. He told me, let's go. So we went there and we came back. And then I, uh, I go, what about the car? I said to him, what about the car, the, the stolen car that you, the police see and you park up? Yeah. He goes, I didn't know it was stolen. They told me that I dropped his car off somewhere and I, and I dropped it off. I didn't know it was stolen. Yeah. Said, okay, that's, that's, that's That covers that. That's, that's okay. that big <laughs> And I go, why were you chatting to these guys that much from within the prison? Yeah. And he goes, because they were all remanded, they were phoning me to drop off parcels to certain people. So when I got arrested in Litchfield, get the inventory of what was in my boot, there was unwrapped, un sorry, opened clothes packaging yeah. that I've got from JD, that I've got delivery from Foot Locker. And this was all to go inside prison for these guys. The re reason I was there where I was is because this, they, they are saving prisoners. They were already saving. This guy, I was going to drop off stuff to this guy's partner who was going to give it to him to put because inside. he's on remand and they have more rights as a prisoner. Remand prisoners have more rights so, and he was going to pass on to them. Anyway, there's loads of phone conversation with them like on a daily basis. They had phones inside as well. We put that forward to the jury. He was acquitted, not guilty. Not guilty. Out of the nine people, he got found not guilty. If I didn't get his mobile phone, he would be doing 19, 20 years now. And they can genuinely try and avoid as much as possible giving you the phone. Yeah, they can avoid it. Two things. One is, of course, it's their job. The CPS are out there to convict people. Let's not beat around the bush. They want yeah, to convict people. They want to send people to jail. They don't care whether you're innocent or you're guilty. It's not up to them. And it's numbers for them as well. Stats. Yes, I've convicted that really? guy. Too. Of course well. it is. When two barristers are at it in court, the prosecution barrister wants to win the case and a win for him is sending someone to prison or convicting someone. Yeah. The defense barrister wants to acquit, wants to get an acquittal and not guilty. And a win for them is people walking out of court. So two different sides in it. So they, of course, will make our life as difficult as possible. They won't give us things. And the other thing is, there's two things. One is that they want to win the case. Secondly, the more disclosure that we have, the as easier. Easy as well, but we get paid more, don't we? It's more work for us as well. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they don't want us to get paid as well. Yeah. So there's two, two ways that they always try to stop disclosure. Let's pause on that for a second, yeah? Right. I heard you say something about you having more money than most of these drug dealers. What's yeah. that about? See, uh, I've seen Lambos. I've seen the you Lambos. You've seen them, you've seen them. But let me tell you something. It's not even about having more money. That was a message that I was trying to, you know, give to the youth. That use your head. You don't need to be a drug dealer. That's what I said. I've got more money than any drug dealer. Bring one, especially these little ones that they look <laughs> up to. The little rappers. The rappers don't even have money. The people who rap about all this crime. And I've seen them in real life. Trust me. And they be locked up in prison. They don't even have their canteen money. And they're talking about, you know, this, that, I've got this gold chain, I've got that watch, I've got <laughs> cola, that. They don't have, that's what I meant. Not in a bad way. Sorry about the drug dealers. <laughs> you know, any drug dealer offended, I'm sorry. But the thing is, if we look at it in a, start measuring wealth, then I probably do have more money than them. Because yeah. they probably got more cash at home. So, you know, you can't even hide cash at home these can't days. can't even spend it. You can't even spend it that much. A lot of places have gone card only. Yeah. yeah. A lot of bars, I've had a, I was at a venue that day and it was card only. So when are you going to spend that? You can only go and buy more drugs. Yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? And okay, there's ways of laundering it. I get a lot of comments. I know, I know big time drug dealers. I know big time drug lords. Let me tell you something. They would, if they can be in my position, they would rather be in my position than being a drug dealer. Trust me. I don't have to look up over my shoulder. I do now a bit, though. It's coming to that stage <laughs> now. I'm not even being funny, though, but look, don't even want to talk about it, but bring up Andrew Tate on just yeah. that touch. He's been locked up. Yeah. People are saying for nothing. You're 
in Birmingham keeping a lot of these naughty boys the police want inside outside. So police must be on your case. I think the police, some of them really like me. Yeah. I was walking through city centre that day and a lot of officers, they, they, they came up to me and they said, Yo, okay, Mr. Yakuba, how are you? So a lot of them do like me, but then I know police officers who work within the police force and they, they tell me what kind of conversations these guys be having about me in the uh, common room, the very yeah, yeah. common room, so they, they, behind the scenes. So all of you guys who talk about me, I know who you are. So when <laughs> I come see you at the police station, you're acting all nice. Uh, do you want a drink? Do you want a coffee? I know how you be going on about me behind my back, but it is what it is. You must be on their radars because they want the criminals locked up. You're keeping the criminals out. I exactly. And they sort of say, they, they think that I'm, I'm, I'm inciting criminal behavior or I'm encouraging crime. I'm not. You're doing your job. I'm doing my job. I'm doing what I studied to for so many years to do, and I'm doing it, and I'm doing it well. And I don't think uh, I can be stopped. You know, Alhamdulillah, with the will of Allah, I'm gonna carry on, and um, I'm gonna get even more bigger, and I'm gonna save even more people. I'm gonna help even more people. A lot of people say to me how I feel in defending criminals, and how I feel if I would, was to save a guilty man. First of all, I don't know whether they're guilty or whether they're innocent. That's up to them. I work on the evidence, mm -hmm. based on the evidence. Secondly, there's a quote from a famous French philosopher, Voltaire's name is, which is like this, it is better to risk saving a guilty man than to condemn an innocent one. Yeah. So I'll rather risk saving someone who's guilty than sending someone to prison who's innocent. Yeah. There are people in, like I said earlier, there's people in prison that have not done a thing Trust me, they have got convicted just based on one phone call. Yeah. They've phoned somebody and that guy's gone and murdered someone. They've got done for conspiracy to murder. They've phoned somebody and that guy's got arrested for selling drugs. And they've got done for conspiracy to supply drugs. I've seen a lot of innocent people that are in prison who I genuinely believe are innocent. They are in prison. That hurts more. Let me tell you something. That hurts more than me thinking, oh, this guy might have done it and he's walking free have you ever said no to a case yeah you have i've said no to cases why sex cases okay yeah yeah that's res i respect that yeah you can't you can't back everyone you can't <laughs> you it? can't and you got listen you got morals as well you have to have morals and there's some things where you got to say yo i can't back that one i can't do Sorry. it and i've got i fall out with a lot of clients as well <laughs> not in a, really? in a bad way but because I'm straight up I think I, I, I tell the truth so I will be at the police station and tell you how much years are you looking at or don't worry you'll be okay and usually I'm right but that's a lot better than having a if I'm in court for example and I'm sitting there and my solicitor's going you're good you're good then I get a 15 year sentence I'm gonna be like fuck you told me yeah. I was good whereas if you've you told me I'm getting 10 years and I get 15 at least I've prepped myself to do something mentally yeah you, you're mentally ready then well you're never going to be mentally ready to do 15 16 never. years in prison never i don't think anybody is but at least you don't think that you're going to go home i've had people come to me and say this guy said to me i'm going home well i, I said to him that guy is blatantly Church. insulting your intelligence he's chatting it the thing is and he, you've sat there and you've let him lie to you aren't you a man you don't have to be, you don't have to be a lawyer to know what the evidence against you is. If something's in black and white, something's in black and white, you can't change the evidence. That's what I say to people. I'm not a magician, I'm a legal tactician. So I can only work with the tools that I've got provided in front of me. If I don't have no tools, if it's black and white, I'm going to tell you, listen, plead guilty. If you don't like the advice, you can go and get alternative yeah. representation. It's your life, it's your choice. But I don't play with people's lives. But I think that's why you have built such a strong name in only five years. Because five years isn't long. There's five years, yeah. There's people who are like 30 years strong and th that's what it is. But I think because you are real, if someone comes to you and you say, look, this is my case, talk to me. And you're like, listen, realistically, you're doing time. A lot of people are like, look, we're going to get you away. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Half the time, you're not going to do it. You're just trying to get as much money out of that boy as, per, as, as exactly. possible. Exactly. And then the thing is this as well. Mikey, what is now, like uh, what I said, if you introduce me to someone and say, look, represent this guy, look after him. If I sit there 
and I keep on lying to the guy, that's, that's insulting what I'm looking, you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insulting you, innit? So if somebody's put me through to somebody or put someone through to me, and I'm going to sit there and lie to them, then I've got you to answer to, innit? And a lot of your work is probably done by word of mouth. Friends on friends on friends on friends. A lot. The word of mouth is the best form of advertisement, 100%. I would say. You know yourself. Every, not, every businessman will tell you that. Yes, mm. social media is good. Yes, think it, but this is not a... You know, I'm not selling something. Yeah. It's a service. I have to provide a good service. And it's, it's people's lives on the line. Exactly. It's not just people need to hear from someone. He saved me. Like, he helped me. Yeah. And there are people there, man. There, there are people there that can About generally you. say, if it wasn't for this man, I would be doing 15 to 25 years in prison. And that's a big statement, man. That's a big statement. I, I represented someone on a murder case last year in April. And again, he was the only one to be acquitted out of six people. Now, I know he must be going and singing my... Although we yeah. had a, a lot of falling out during the case. <laughs> and we, we was getting into arguments literally every week when I was seeing him. He was only local. Yeah. So it wasn't that difficult to go what and What did see. you originally tell him? I told him when he first phoned me before he had been arrested... I told him, if you listen to me and we play the case exactly the way I wanted to, you've done nothing wrong, you will be getting acquitted. But please don't make me repeat myself. Don't make me tell you the same thing that I've already told you once. Mm -hmm. And don't expect me to be a babysitter. I'm not a babysitter. Me coming to see you is not going to help your case. Me sitting in the office and looking for ways so that you can get found not guilty will help you. Yeah. And I've done that now. That's that, that was going back and forth like them kind of arguments. Not, not <laughs> huge, not, you know. So I was saying, leave it. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't like clients that make me repeat myself. Mm -hmm. you, know, you probably don't like it as well. But do you know what it is as well? A lot of them clients are scared. They're scared. Yeah. They want to hear they it. They want to hear it. And because you've got such a good track record, they want to hear your voice. They want to hear you say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah. It's like when you're young and you've done something wrong or you're in trouble at school and your mom goes or dad goes, it's going to be fine. You're like, oh, thank God, it's going to yeah, be okay. Yeah, right. But they want to hear that from you. Yeah, in, their, in their eyes, you're their saving grace. You're the man. You're the fucking superhero in the sky. <laughs> like, I, I, And you know what it is? You're right there because I, a lot of times I send other people to go and see. Yeah, they don't want to see them. They don't want to see them. So I've, I'll send one of the girls or one of the boys from the office and they will go and they'll say, no, where's Mr. <laughs> and then, I'll say, okay. then I'll go and see them. I say, what do you need to see me for? They go, you know what? Sometimes it's just that. Yeah. Just to see you. It's not even. And a lot of people from social media have probably built up. Like when I first come here, I don't know you. First time I've ever met you. But I know you from social. So it's exactly. like, I can speak to you a lot more comfortable than I can speak to any of your staff. Because I've, even though I've only seen you once on socials, yeah. I've never seen them. Exactly. So it's a familiar face. I know your yeah. face. I feel comfortable coming and talking to you. And now imagine if you're looking at 10 years, you don't care about what girls come to tell you. Okay, Mr. Yacoub said, da, da, da. it's like, no, 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 no. Go and get him. I want to talk to him. Yeah, exactly. So it is, yeah. So, and sometimes I was speaking to someone that day and they go, you know what? When, when we're in prison, they said, when we're in prison, sometimes it's not even about the case. It's about coming out yeah. and we come in there for two hours or an hour busy and we're out of the cell, then we can go back to the cell and we boast about it. Yeah, Mr. Yacoub yeah. come to see us today. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. So it's a bit of, you know, I don't know, sometimes they like socializing with me. I'm really easy <laughs> to get along with. Yeah, no, 100%. You're cool. You're, uh, you're, you're not, I would never think genuinely sitting here that I'm sitting in front of a solicitor. I wouldn't. Yeah, you wouldn't. You're chilled. You're cool. You're, and I think that's what's built your, your brand so quick because yeah. people can relate to you as well. You have was brought up in a ghetto... The uh, hood. The, the hood. Yeah. So talking to someone from the hood about the hood <laughs> is a bit different. Whereas yeah. when you're talking to a man in a suit sitting there who's never had a day of struggle in his life and he's telling you you're going to go to prison, you want to knock the guy out. Like genuinely. But when you've got someone there who's lived that life, been in the hood, done it all, seen it, it's a bit more like, bro, tell me, man, like man to man, am I going inside? Am I not? Like it's different hearing it. Yeah, this is what I say to people... When setting out on a journey, don't take advice from people who've never left their home. So people don't want to hear from people who've not been around this kind of stuff that, yeah, it'll be all right. They'll think, you know what, my man's bullshitting. Shit. I don't know, you know. <laughs> it's one of them ones. So they, I, I can relate to people. That's I can relate I mean. to a lot of people. And I get, I get told I look like a criminal. I don't know. What, what, do, you think? <laughs> what do you think? What does a criminal look like? I don't know exactly. Sometimes... Uh, this I was looking at a clip on TikTok that day, and the guy goes, um, the, "This old man, he said that 
some guy came up to me and said, you're a criminal? He goes, I put a shotgun in his mouth and I said, no, I'm not a criminal. I'm a businessman who does crime as a business. Yeah. So, Listen, crime can be a business. Crime can no. be a business. Crime Sometimes is your business. It's my, it's my business. Crime business is your and business. It pays. It definitely does. That pay. way it pays. But like what I said before about drug dealers being broke and I've got more money than all the drug dealers. Again, I meant there's other ways of making money. Yeah, that was an educational message to the youth. Educational message. Yes, exactly that. And uh, people took it the wrong way a bit. But <laughs> you probably well. had all your clients phoning you like, but what do you mean you're making more money? <laughs> that's what it is. So listen, it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you for coming on. Definitely a part two coming soon. Definitely looking forward to part two. And let me hear the famous words one last time. Remember, there's a defense for every offense. Guys, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And we look forward to part two.